All right, welcome back. So here is example 8-14, looking off of page 445 in your texts. Uh, and of course, we're still in chapter 8, section 3, um, talking about the t-test for a mean. So here we are simply going to be finding the p-value when the test value is 2.056 and the sample size n equals 11 and the test is right-tailed. And that's how I'm going to spell right-tailed. Okay, so to get the p-value, let's go ahead and find a table here and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly try to explain my methodology here when I'm trying to find a p-value. Here's what I'm doing. So, row 10, I see these values, 1.372, 1 1 1.812, 2.228, 2.764 and then finally 3.169 and uh, those are a little bit messy but here these are critical t values and then in each one of these <coughs> the uh, corresponding column has a value for alpha, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what is our T value. Our T value is 2.056. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, where where is that? In this list of numbers, it is in between 1.812 and 2.228. So the value of alpha, let me get rid of that alpha, that 1.812 corresponds to is for one tail, alpha equals 0 0.05, and then the alpha value that 2.228 corresponds to. Well, let's see, 2.228 is in the same row, just the next column. And that uh, one tail value is 0 0.25, okay? So basically what's, what's going on over here is, is we, are, we are looking you know, in, in the tail of the curve here, or well, well inside the tail here, and we'll get rid of these values like that, then this is, this is what is going on. We have at, at 1.82, this total blue shaded in area there is, 0 0.05, okay, this area shaded in yellow is exactly 0 0.025, and our test statistic is right here. We're not talking about whether it's inside of a critical value, although look, if it were uh, a test at a significance level of 0 0.05, it would be within the critical region and we would reject the null hypothesis. If it were at a sort of a higher significance level, if it were uh, alpha equals 0 0.025, it would not be inside the critical region. And so we would say, no, nope, we don't have enough evidence. We're not going to reject the null hypothesis. 
But either way, we're asking the question, okay, so what is this shaded area we have here? Well, you can see it's slightly more than 0 0.025, but then again, it's got to be less than 0 0.5. So this area underneath the curve, we were talking about this before, is exactly our p value. So we, we don't know the exact value for p. We can't know it, really. But we do know that it is somewhere between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05. So here, this does tell us uh, enough. So we would, like I was just saying, uh, if alpha was 0 0.025 or less, then our p-value would be greater than alpha, and we would uh, fail to reject h subscript 0. If alpha were equal to 0 0.05, or if it were, you know, even, even bigger than that, you know, um, then what? Then um, the p-value would be less than alpha, and so that means we would reject the null hypothesis. <clears throat> so anyway, this, this does tell us at least enough information to go with because we at least know which range it's in. We don't know the exact p-value, but we know close enough to what the p-value is. All right, so let's maybe go into, yeah, um, well, let's do one more quick example of finding a p-value. Whoops, went too many pages. Oh, there we go. Let's, uh, let's look at the next example. This is example 8-15. And it says find the p-value. when the t test value is 2.983, the sample size n is equal to 6, and the test is two-tailed. How do I say that? I spell that as follows, like that, two-tailed. Okay, so here let me go ahead and find row 5. So n is equal to 6. That means df is always n minus 1 is equal to 6 minus 1, also known as 5. That's pretty easy. We don't really have to do anything with that. Okay. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so what I did here is I went to the t table and looked at, first of all, row 5, df equals 5 in this row, and I really didn't have to write down these values here, but basically what I'm searching for is, my, my value is 2.983, and so I'm going to see how close can I get to that. Well, that one's pretty close, and the next one is a little bit little bit close, but I've gone a little bit too far. So that means my, my value is, is right inside here. The, the green value is right here. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the corresponding alphas for each one of these. All right. So <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'll just kind of cut through the previous line and talk about alpha up here. So remember, there's uh, one tail and there's two tails. So here, it's, it's important 
not to not to you know look at the look at the wrong um, wrong column. Okay, so in in our case here, uh, we have to make sure that we're paying attention to the correct value of of alpha. All right, so <clears throat> we do have to kind of pay attention to that. All right, so here with, uh, let's see, with five degrees of freedom, um, we're looking at for this one, two tails, alpha equals 0 0.05. One tail would be 0 0.025, doesn't matter. And then here, uh, for t equals 3.365, um, for two tails, it would be 0 0.02. For one tail, the area under just the right side, that would be 0 0.1. Okay, so this was what? This was a two-tailed test. So this part of it right here, we're not going to pay attention to. Um, all right, it doesn't. It doesn't matter that these values, uh, you know, the the inequality goes in this direction, and then here our p value is in between these two critical alpha values. And, and the inequality goes the other direction. That's okay, in fact, that, that will happen, okay? So what is, what is the answer to this question? The answer to this question is, well, the p-value is somewhere, somewhere in between, <clears throat> somewhere in between 0. 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. It's smaller than 0 0.05, but it's larger than 0 0.02.